Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. The pressure and human anguish playing out in wartime airfields seems to leave a lot of imprinted spiritual energy and perhaps lost souls. The first of these accounts is from a Weird World viewer. Phantom Guards In the late 70s, Clive was serving in the British Army in a barracks in Munster, Germany. The barracks had been in use by the Luftwaffe during World War II and little had changed on the base. Clive was the guard commander one Friday night when he was in charge of the guard that would patrol the camp perimeter after dark, looking out for intruders and also inebriated soldiers causing problems inside the camp. His role was to organise the six men into three pairs that would patrol in turn during periods of two hours on and four hours off until the morning. Therefore, only two men would be on duty patrolling at once, when they would be carrying just a lamp and a pickaxe handle. One of the men was known to be someone who would shirk his duties and find a spot to sleep, which obviously compromised the safety of the camp and annoyed the other soldiers. Clive was reminded that night that this man was on guard duty and so made plans to watch him. At around 3am, Clive decided to himself take a wander around the camp, which wasn't so large that he could miss the two-man guard. He knew that he would eventually bump into them. As he set off up the main road from the guard room to the barrack blocks where the men slept, he saw two figures in the distance and was pleased to see that one guard was not skiving but patrolling as per his duties. Clive was about to return to the warmth and comfort of the guardroom when he felt compelled to keep walking and greet the men, exchanging some pleasantries first. This way he thought they would know that he was willing to walk about and if they decided to slacken during the next patrol, he would be on to them. As he approached the two figures, he thought it was odd that they were marching in step with each other. Usually when soldiers are on guard, they tend to stroll around and take a gentle pace as they check that doors and the fence are secure. He thought that the two figures marching in step were having a laugh and wondered if this was a wind-up. What he found very odd, though, was that there was no sound, no noise of the boots on the ground. Then he noticed that the two figures were wearing peaked caps, not berets, which are usually worn by the British soldier in casual dress. Now quite bemused, Clive wondered if they were the orderly officer and orderly sergeant who would be wearing peaked caps and probably march in step when crossing the camp. Clive decided to approach the pair, greet them and salute the officer as it was too late to do anything else. So he strode ahead and prepared to speak to the two men. However, as he got nearer, he thought that their uniforms didn't look right and that their knee-length black boots were not British Army issue. It was hard to see colours as it was dark and they were under street-style lighting. He could see that the two men were talking as he could see their mouths moving. One soldier looked across at the other and was grinning and they were obviously engaged in conversation as they made their way across the camp. But although he could see the movement of their mouths and heads, there was still complete silence. Clive now stopped short and watched, knowing that something was not right. The boots, the peaked caps that were the wrong type and shape, the leather belt around the waist and shoulder. He was then completely stunned when the two men suddenly vaporised. They gradually faded out as if walking into a wall of vapour and then there was nothing there. It was open ground with no buildings, no trees, no object to hide behind, nothing. Clyde stood for a minute trying to gather his senses, looked around and couldn't see anyone. He turned and walked back to the guard room where the lads inside asked him if he was okay, as he was looking a bit off colour. Clive said that he was okay, and no more about it, but later realised that he had seen the ghosts of two Luftwaffe officers still around today. Disused Aerodrome Spirit 
In the late 1970s, in Croydon, South London, a young couple was shocked when an RAF pilot, complete with World War II leather jacket, helmet and oxygen mask, started appearing in their home. The husband was a collector of military souvenirs and subsequently knew who to blame when he found his tailor's dummy, which he had clad in a German SS uniform, hurled from its usual place in the hall of his home. Clearly, the ghost was not happy about finding reminders of an enemy in his new haunt. After a series of unnerving occurrences, the pair called in the Society for Psychical Research while requesting that they remain anonymous. They reported to the investigator, Brian Nisbet, that the pilot had appeared four times. The first time had been in the wife's bedroom when she was preparing for a dinner party and the second time was in the lounge room when the husband was watching TV. There were two more appearances in the bedroom, one when the wife was ironing in there and the second when the couple were in there together. After that, they had not sighted him again, but his invisible spirit started playing tricks on them and their guests. First came the aforementioned throwing of the offending tailor's dummy ten feet across the hall. But the last straw was when he turned up in the spare bedroom, where a young married couple was staying as guests. In the middle of the night, the man got up to go to the bathroom, and while he was away, the woman suddenly felt the bedclothes being wrenched away from her naked body. At that stage, the homeowners called in a local clergyman, but even during the exorcism ceremony, the phantom pilot seemingly could not resist a prank. The wife felt the strap of her bra being snapped, though nobody was standing near her. Investigator Nisbet discovered that the pair's house was situated on an estate built on the site of the old Croydon airport. The base had been upgraded to a fighter airport during World War II and finally closed in 1959. However, Nisbet was still unable to explain any of the phenomena that had occurred to them. Pilot's Time Slip in 1935, a young RAF pilot was flying over the village of Drem in Scotland when he saw a sight that puzzled him. The young pilot, who was later to earn the title Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard, was then still a wing commander and had been sent to inspect a disused airfield near Edinburgh. He found it in a very dilapidated condition, with cattle grazing on grass growing through cracks in the tarmac. Later in the day, he experienced problems while flying his biplane in heavy rain and headed back to Drem to get his bearings. He later reported that, as he approached the old airfield, the torrential rain abruptly changed to bright sunlight. When he looked down, he observed that the airfield had been completely repaired and was suddenly back in use. Mechanics in blue overalls were walking around, and there were four yellow planes parked on the runway. One of the planes was a model which, despite all his aviation experience, he completely failed to recognise. The base at Drem was upgraded four years later, in 1939, and went on to serve as an air defence fighter unit for Edinburgh during the Second World War. But Goddard's apparent time-slip experience was made all the more believable by the fact that, while RAF training planes were originally a silver aluminium colour, in 1939 they began to be painted in a distinctive yellow colour. Also, at around the same time, the Air Force changed the colour of their mechanic overalls from tan to blue. Goddard's predictive apparition was never able to be explained.